Hey, I'm Vinny and this is Makeify. So we keep our spices in this little cabinet above the stove and it's a little bit inconvenient to try to find a specific spice because you kind of have to dig around until you find what you're looking for. So I made this spice rack that spins and I'm going to show you how I did it. The spice rack was made mostly from a large board of spruce I got from a home improvement store. It was 12 inches wide, more than 36 inches long, and 3 quarters of an inch thick. I marked off a 12 inch section and cut it off with a small circular saw. Then I did that two more times. I ended up with three 12 inch squares. I marked the center of each square by finding the intersection of the diagonals. Then I used my bandsaw circle cutting jig to cut the squares into circles with 10.5 inch diameters. I have a video about how I made this jig. You can click on the card above or the link down in the video description. My drill press isn't big enough to reach the center of the circles, so I use this drill guide thing I have to drill a very small hole all the way through the center of two of the circles. I made a template on the computer. It was too big to fit on one sheet of paper, so I printed it out on several sheets and taped them together. You can download this template for free. There's a link down in the video description. I used a thumbtack to align the template to the center of one of the circles and used a couple more thumbtacks to mark where I needed to drill the holes for the spice jars. I repeated this with a second circle but left the third one unmarked because it doesn't need any holes in it. The piece without holes will be the base of the spice rack. I used the drill guide and a 2 inch Forstner bit to drill a hole in the center of one of the circles on the same side of the wood as the marks I made with the thumbtack. This hole went about halfway through the wood. This circle will become what I'm calling the bottom of the spice rack. I repeated this on the other marked circle, but I drilled the hole on the unmarked side of the wood. This circle will become the top of the spice rack. At this point, I was able to use my drill press to drill the holes for the spice jars. They were all drilled with a 1 and 3 quarter inch Forstner bit. And the holes went about halfway through the wood. I used a sanding drum on my Dremel rotary tool and a homemade router base to make the holes I just drilled a little bit bigger. The router base ensured that the sides of the holes remained perfectly perpendicular to the bottom of the holes. I have a video about how I made this router base. Again, there's a card up above and a link down below to that video. The reason I made these holes bigger is that a standard McCormick spice jar fits a bit too tightly in a 1 and 3 quarter inch hole. I used a sanding disc in my Dremel to sand the bottom of all the holes nice and smooth. Then I sanded the tops and bottoms of the three circles down to 220 grit. I clamped the circles together and then sanded the sides down to 220 grit as well. I clamped them together so they would remain identical in diameter. I got a large dowel rod from the home improvement store that was two and a half inches in diameter and cut a six inch long piece off of it.
Then I sanded this down to 220 grit. I glued the dowel rod into the bottom of the spice rack. I clamped the pieces together with a special clamp I made just for this purpose. It's just two pieces of plywood with holes at the corners with threaded rods in these holes which are held in place with some washers and nuts. This special clamp allowed me to adjust the clamping force of each corner to ensure that the dowel rod was perfectly perpendicular to the bottom piece. After the glue had dried, I glued the other end of the dowel rod to the top piece using the special clamp again. I got a 4 inch Lazy Susan bearing. I centered it on the base piece and marked the four mounting holes. Then I turned the bearing 90 degrees and marked one of the top mounting holes. I drilled pilot holes in the four mounting holes and then drilled a 5 16 inch hole all the way through the wood at the fifth spot I marked. I got some shellac and finish the wood with four coats of shellac, sanding with steel wool between coats. I positioned the bearing on the base and screwed it into place with four screws. I flipped everything over and positioned the base onto the bottom of the spice rack. I used the 5 16 inch hole to kind of see through the base and mark the top mounting holes of the Lazy Susan on the bottom of the spice rack. Then I drilled pilot holes and screwed in four screws to secure the Lazy Susan to the bottom of the spice rack. I got some rubber bumpers and put three of them on the base of the spice rack. And then the spice rack was ready to use. I'm happy with the way the spice rack turned out. I think it'll be a lot easier to find the spice I'm looking for. Plus this thing's just fun to spin. <laughs> I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe to keep up to date with my newest videos. I'd like to thank my top Patreon supporter, Michael Thomas. Thank you, Michael. And thank you for watching. Whee! <laughs> hey, I'm Vinny and this is Makeify. So we keep our spice, Blah. I'm happy with the way the I'm happy with the way the spice rack turned out. Uh, yeah, I'm happy with the way the spice rack turned out. I think it's going to be a lot easier to find the spice. I'm happy with the way the spice rack turned out. I think it's going to be a lot easier to find our. Sp okay. <laughs>